The day after Daniel and my magical wedding, we headed to Iceland. We flew Sunday night from Boston and we arrived at 4 a.m. So we got some coffee, a croissant, and then headed to Reykjavik. We are in Iceland for our honeymoon, baby. Um, it's very cold. It is very early in the morning. The sun has not risen yet. We are trying to find some coffee before we go to the Blue Lagoon test. And so we found the only coffee shop that was open at seven was the time we ended up arriving after getting our rental car and stuff. And we actually met a couple who told us about the Sky Lagoon, which we ended up ending our trip with. It was really cool. They said they saw the Northern Lights there and it was amazing. So that was really cool meeting someone from the States. And then we just walked around Reykjavik as the sun was rising and we needed to kill time until we went to the Blue Lagoon. So we just explored this adorable little city. And we couldn't even get into our Airbnb yet because check-in was at 3 p.m. So we really were kind of stranded and it was quite cold, but uh, eventually it became time to head to the Blue Lagoon. Hot tip for anyone going to Iceland, look up the uh, road signs because they're very confusing and different than America. <laughs> And it was a really beautiful drive there and it was funny because driving in the dark to Reykjavik we were like what the heck is this landscape like I didn't know what was next to us and it turns out that they were lava fields it looked like sand driving by I thought I was convinced it was sand but no it was lava with like some green algae moss I'm not really sure um, on top of it it was so cool it's nothing like I've ever seen before And as you can see there in the distance, it is the steam from the lagoon rising. And so that means that we arrived. And this is us walking up to the Blue Lagoon. It's really cool, all these lava rocks next to us. And that is the lagoon. So we got in, got little wristbands to check us in, got changed and showered, and then went out into this warm, light blue, beautiful, basically it's a giant hot tub. And the blue color is actually uh, natural and it has minerals that are good for your skin, which is really cool. And I do think my skin cleared up after visiting this lagoon. Ooh, this is my husband. <laughs> there are a lot of little corners to hide out in just to enjoy time together as husband and wife. <laughs> I want to get, I want to get matching tattoos with Daniel, and he won't yet. So for our wedding night, look like, what he did. Oh, bunny! I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I can't see anything. What? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I can't see anything because of the mist, but we're trying to find the face masks. And we also saw, it looked like there was a movie crew filming something. We got our face mask, trying to get it. You can do more masks if you want. Well, we get one included. We got the one that was included. Oh, they never tapped us though. Oh, so maybe you get more. I think it's unlimited there. <laughs> like whatever they gave us is <laughs> We'll see you. You can put your hand in the water. Yeah. And then after the Blue Lagoon, which was so relaxing and the perfect way to start. Oh, we actually had to stop um, at a gas station and nap because we could not keep our eyes open. But we made it back to Reykjavik and we did a little shopping. We both needed hats, so we got little Iceland hats. Woo And then we arrived at our Airbnb, which was adorable. Um, just the decorations, the style. We stayed up in the loft with this beautiful view of the mountains in the back. 
and yeah it was just so cute and quirky and um was a really lovely place to stay And our Airbnb was in such a great location because it had that view, but it was right like two blocks away from the major shopping street. Um, so all the restaurants, all the shops, anything we needed was right there. It was perfect location wise. And um, I'm not going to try to pronounce all the Icelandic names because I simply cannot and I don't want to offend or embarrass myself. So I will just post them on the screen because yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> Our Airbnb host left us a really cute list of her favorite things to do, which was nice. We tried to go to a few of them, so it was definitely helpful. And there were two bedrooms that we didn't even go in because it was a really large house, but yeah, it was really fun to explore. And it had this beautiful little balcony where you could really see the, I think it was the ocean and the mountains and a few other apartment complexes. And then we went out to a fish and chips place, got some fish and chips, some bread baskets. And then we went to see this really famous church, which is really beautiful. I love the way it was lit up at night. We had a lovely little dinner. We are in our Icelandic hat and we're going to our Northern Lights tour. The index is low. So my hopes are low, but they're also secretly high. So hopefully we'll see something. The magic is gonna happen. Mad, you know what? It always works out. God is good, right? He's still good if we don't see Northern Lights, but I hope we do. <laughs> So then we went on the Northern Lights tour and unfortunately we did not see the Northern Lights, but don't worry because there's more to come. So the next morning we found this little cafe which turned out being my favorite. Um, they had the best lattes in Iceland in my humble opinion. So we did drink a lot of coffee <laughs> and we got this um, like grilled cheese breakfast thing. It was very oily, but it was good. Um, and then we were frankly exhausted so we had a really relaxing day in town and that's pretty much it that's one of the things that i wasn't exactly expecting after my wedding was that i was absolutely tuckered out like i was so tired and then we were up for over 48 hours because we flew sunday night and then we just had the full day monday and then the northern lights tour that night so we were exhausted and needed a nice cozy relaxing day in Reykjavik And everywhere you could see this adorable puffin merchandise and we both say that we saved a lot of money because unfortunately um, the fall and winter are not puffin season so we couldn't see puffins so we didn't want to buy the puffin merch but if we had then we would have spent at least three times the money we did um, on all the adorable puffin merchandise but I love the sheep stuff so I was happy <laughs> In Reykjavik, even though it is very touristy, it's like the one main tourist spot on the island, it's really cute and I enjoyed it. And they have a lot of really adorable architecture and little like 
hidden art installations and I, I did really enjoy it. And then we walked down to the port just to get a little different view of the city right on that edge and that was actually near where our Airbnb was. And then to do something fun, Daniel loves darts. So we found this darts bar that we went into. <gasps> Look what I just got. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like us and then these like professional darts players, I think, practicing. But we played some darts and I uh, have no skill, but it was very fun. We got some hot dogs. The classic is with what? Fresh onion, fried onion. No idea. Something else in mustard. I had to get a plane. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Yeah? <laughs> and then we walked around town a little bit at night and we got some hot dogs, which our neighbors actually told us that we had to get. And then we woke up early the next morning and went on a South Coast tour. And this was actually the, my favorite thing that we did. And you can see the geothermal springs and they're everywhere. And that is actually um, a huge source of Iceland's energy. So they have a lot of renewable energy, which is really cool. And we drove past a lot of horses. Apparently after the horses have been worked for 25 years, they go to retirement and that's not what you think. They just literally live in the countryside in groups and just graze all day and live their best lives. So it was really fun. We also passed a lot of sheep, which I got so excited for because I'm really in sheep right now. <laughs> but the entire bus, it was a little bus with like eight of us and the whole drive was just beautiful. And it was so cool seeing all the different landscapes and the glaciers. You can see a glacier right here, peeking through the mountains and um, all the little cottages and houses right at the base of the mountains. It was just stunning. So our first stop was this place right here that I can't pronounce and you can see the glacier through the mountains. It was a quick stop, but it was cool. And they also have a lot of, um, they believe in elves. And so they have a lot of little elf houses by the side of the road, which is really cute. And then we went to Skogafoss, is the one thing I'm going to try to say, and that is this beautiful big waterfall, and there was a rainbow next to it, which was beautiful, and the mossy mountains, and a field of sheep. So it pretty much had everything. <laughs> and then we kept driving, and you could see the glaciers and this beautiful little church. And then we went to the Black Sand Beach, which was my favorite place we went. It was gorgeous. Um, just the stone and rock formations in the middle of the water, it was just so cool. And this cave, they actually said, was used in like Game of Thrones and Star Wars. Um, that's what our guide said, so I'm not sure. I didn't fact check, but it was so cool. I don't know how it was made with all those vertical pieces of stone. It was really really beautiful to see and quite big and those rocks sticking up were believed to be trolls who got um i'm not sure if they did something bad or something but for some reason they were trolls that turned into rocks in the middle of the uh, ocean but this was just absolutely breathtaking to see sand was it was pretty big it was like pebbles and the wind was unreal so it, it actually whipped the pebbles into your face which wasn't super pleasant but the view was worth it and then right near this black sand beach was Vic which is a very popular tourist destination it's just a little village right near the ocean and it, it was very beautiful we stopped there for lunch the food options weren't amazing and that's what one thing i will say about all of iceland pretty much is that the food options are not great at least for the tourist areas i got the sense that they don't really eat out much so for us it was like burgers or fish and chips 
It wasn't like the most exciting cuisine, but our bellies were full and we drank lots of lattes and had a lot of baked goods, so I can't complain. And then we stopped at this glacier. This was the closest we got to the glacier and it was really cool to see how, I mean, obviously everything was frozen, wink, wink. Um, and I decided to drink the water because, <laughs> you know, you always hear glacier water, um, but it actually tasted very sulfury. <laughs> That's another thing I will say is that um, the water is clean, but it is very sulfury. But it was really cool seeing a glacier in the middle of the mountains, especially now that I'm um, good friends with Anna. And then we went to another waterfall, and this one we could actually hike behind, which was really cool. We got absolutely soaked, but it was cool and it was really beautiful. We went the, the way that most people, it was a circle around, and most people went to the right and we went to the left. Um, cause it was less crowded, but it was definitely harder terrain up. So I don't know if I would recommend it. Um, but it was, it was a bit of an adventure, but it was really cool to see from the back. But yeah, we got soaked <laughs> and a little muddy. <laughs> and a lot of these beautiful destinations are quite touristy um, because tourists are actually a huge source of income for Iceland. So you will see little shops that can be cheesy, but I still think they're cute. This little waterfall was hidden within the mountains, um, and so you could hike through it. But Daniel and I were already soaked and cold, so we just stayed and enjoyed the view from the outside. And we were also a little waterfalled out, <laughs> but it was still enjoyable and people who went in said they really enjoyed it. It was a long day, so we just ended with a dinner back in Reykjavik. We uh, pretty much ate and went to bed. And then we got up early and went to Rudenko, and which was our favorite bakery we found. This was actually on the list of recommendations. It was delicious. I got a pretzel croissant, which was just amazing. A pretzel croissant. How's your normal? That's pretty good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. A little salty. So got the crunch. So got the butter flaky. Yeah. <laughs> and then we headed out um, to go horseback riding. And actually, right when we um, landed in Iceland, I got a message that our four hour excursion for horseback riding was canceled and I was really bummed because it was the longest one I could find and I just wanted to ride those horses all day long. But it actually turned out for the better because it was really, really cold and by the end of our two hour one that we rebooked, we couldn't feel our feet. So I think we would have been um, a little uh, less happy if we had been out there for four hours. But we arrived early and they just let us into the stables and we could just say hi to all of the horses. There was just rows and rows of horses and they were so cute and fluffy and oh, it was just, it was heaven. And we came right in time for their breakfast. So they were eating lots of hay. And something really cool about Icelandic horses is, is that they have a special gate that I believe is between a trot and a canter. I'm not quite sure, but um, it's supposed to be really smooth. And so um, this tour, you were divided into two groups, one who wanted to stay slow, one who wanted to go a little faster. Here yeah. What's your name? Uh, this is Blessa. Hi, Blessa. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> and so naturally I went to the faster group and we got to try out that gate and um unfortunately i was it was still really bumpy for me but i think it was a me problem because i'm not very skilled and in, in riding horses even though i'm actually taking lessons now so we're getting better but i think it was a me problem for one moment it was a little smooth i was like oh i think that's what it is and then i started clonking around in my stirrups again so it was yeah but it was still a really fun ride and the horses were so fluffy and sweet and cute and small and we followed the leader um, as you do on trail rides, so you don't really have to steer them at all, but up um, onto the top of the mountain with the most beautiful view. But 
we arrived in this beautiful top of this hill and got to see this gorgeous view on the back of a horse. It was truly heaven. And then we got to say hi to the other horses we didn't get to ride um, after we got off and they had their saddles taken off and everything and they were very sweet and silly. Oh, and they were having a grand old time rolling around in the dirt. They were so funny, relaxing and goofing off after a day of work. far from Reykjavik so we did our own little driving tour and one of the most popular things to do in Iceland is called the golden circle and we didn't do it all because one of them was a waterfall like I said we were kind of waterfalled out and another one was the geyser and that was not consistent so and we were, we were tired so we didn't do that but we ended up going to a crater which is part of the golden circle which was really cool but first we um, happened upon a cute little touristy village that really reminded me of Arendelle and it was really adorable and we got some lunch from this little cafeteria and it was a very happy accident to find this cute little town. So like I said, we ended up going to a crater um, that was actually an active volcano. So we walked down to the bottom of a volcano, which was pretty darn cool. And it was funny because it was right off the road. Like we pulled into the parking lot and then there was the crater. It was kind of crazy. Then we headed to Thingvellir National Park, which is not really a walking park. You have to drive because of all those lava rocks. It's a lava field, but the views are really beautiful and you got to see this big body of water, which was very stunning. Also, I just have to point out that I think the country of Iceland looks like a sheep and it makes me so happy. And then we headed back to Reykjavik to get some dinner. And then we went on our Northern Lights hunt take two. When we were on our real tour, I dropped a pin in my maps where we went because we didn't see them. And they do offer you to go on the tour again, but it's very long and it goes very late. So we had the car and now that we knew where we should go, we just went ourselves. We actually saw it as we were driving. So we actually tried pulling over several times to try to see them. I don't know if it was worth it to drive the hour and a half <laughs> north uh, to where we went with our tour because they honestly weren't that bright and they look more green in photos um, than they actually were. It kind of looked like just like candlesticks and flames in the sky, but it was still cool. And you know what? I saw them. My bucket list was checked off. So I was a happy camper. And then we started the next morning at our favorite latte cafe. Um, and then we went to a museum that had a planetarium inside and we watched an Aurora Borealis planetarium dome 
screen show, um, which I loved. It was a very beautiful and really cool learning more about them, especially it, since we'd seen them the night before, which was really, really nice. Um, and then they had an ice cave. So we actually were contemplating going into an ice cave on a, on a tour, but we decided against it and because um, we didn't want to overbook ourselves because we knew we were going to be tired. But actually, it worked out well because one of the volcanoes, some activity was happening, and so they canceled a lot of ice cave tours because of the um, the gas that was released from like the shaking of the volcano. I don't really know, know how it works. But our tour probably would have been canceled. So instead, we did this little man-made ice cave that was kind of cool, it was fine. But also, I have claustrophobia, so I don't know if I could have handled a real ice cave anyway. So. It was enough for me. And then on top of this museum, it was a beautiful panoramic view of Reykjavik, which was just breathtaking and really cool to see from a different perspective where we had been staying the whole, what, five days that we were there. And then we walked down to the water right next to our Airbnb to see this really popular um, Viking ship sculpture that was really cool and the water was just absolutely gorgeous. And then we went to Italian food, which is not what you'd think to do in Iceland, but hey, as I said, our options were limited. Um, and we had some yummy, cheesy pasta. And then to end our trip, we went to Sky Lagoon, which was is a man-made lagoon, uh, much more man-made than the Blue Lagoon. But um, it was really cool, really romantic, a cute little date spot. Okay, I'm using this little light to illuminate us. But this is so beautiful, you can see the stars. I feel like we might see the northern lights. It's so cool. Do you like it, honey? Yeah. <laughs> the cool thing about Sky Lagoon is that it, it's an infinity pool right out to the ocean, so really close to the city, really easy to get to, and really cool. And then we woke up early the next morning, we had to go back to our bakery, and we ate our baked goods by the famous church, got another latte, and then hit the road. It was a truly beautiful little mini moon. It was only a four and a half hour flight away from Boston, so it's really easy to get to. Highly recommend. You don't need a lot of days there, I wouldn't say. Some people drive the entire ring road, which is a road that goes all around the island, and that would definitely take like maybe a few weeks. But if you don't want to overpack yourself and do some touristy things, but also just see the most beautiful landscapes, you don't need that much time. And I felt very fulfilled with our trip and I'm very glad we went. 